Hey guys, I'm Nathan from Arms and Armor. Today we're going to continue uh, looking at the interactions between medieval weapons and armor. Ah, stay tuned. So today I want to look at our new hardened horseman's axe and how it interacts with riveted mail or chain mail, right? Uh, last time I used this spike uh, against some plate armor to try and see how this kind of weapon interacted with that armor, right? And one of the things that we learned is that even a hardened spike has a hard time going through armor that's shaped because one of the things that armor does is deflect blows, right? Here's this helm. So a blow that comes in tends to skate off of these surfaces rather than just grabbing and punching through like it might on a flat piece of metal. Uh, obviously, this male is going to interact differently. Um, I suspect that this spike will have more luck going through that male. Let's see. All right, so here I have some riveted a uh, nine millimeter chain mail that is over this 14 layers uh, of linen on top of this heavy uh, boxing bag, which give, has some give kind of like a human body. Uh, mail was very often worn over uh, quilted or padded cloth uh, in part because mail gives you no impact protection uh, also because it chafes horribly if you wear it without appropriate underclothing. So I'm going to try hitting this and we'll see what happens. Safety third. Interesting. So we've got some penetration through the whole thing. Got three quarters of an inch through that male, and if you look here where it went through, there's a ring that is deformed, but not broken, right? It essentially dished that ring where it went through. It bent it, but it didn't break it. Let's try again. similar level of penetration uh, through there. Again, you can see here that it's just going through a ring until the ring stops it. Right? This seems to suggest to me that smaller rings would probably let the spike protrude less far through them, but it's not breaking that ring, right? No problem. Still, I mean, this would hurt you badly uh, if you were hit with it and you were wearing right, this padded armor and this mail, it would still be going into your flesh part way and it would certainly be breaking bones and harming you very badly. So what's this teach us? Well, that chain or mail armor is fairly effective even against uh, these kinds of spike type weapons uh, and that these weapons actually uh, interact with the male by protruding through uh, the, the holes in the center of the rings. Now historically we see a bunch of different ring sizes just like today if you go on the internet and look for chain mail there's going to be all these different millimeter sizes of gaps in the center uh, of the holes of the male. And that was the case historically too. So I want to show you a couple things from the Oakshot Institute collection here. Uh, first, this is a male Habergeon that appears to be German. It's probably 16th century. 
Okay, this was a period when uh, plate armor predominated, uh, but mail uh, was also worn sometimes uh, as voiders between plates, sometimes by itself, right? Depending on what you were trying to accomplish, how much money you had. Uh, these rings are quite small, right? The holes in these rings are about half the size of those in the reproduction uh, armor that I had. Here are some photos uh, of these for comparison. But historically, there were all kinds of ring sizes, right? I suspect that these smaller ring sizes will stop these kinds of weapons more readily. Uh, they're also way more work uh, to produce. There's more rings uh, in this kind of shirt than in one with rings with bigger holes, right? The other thing is that armor uh, that was in use was frequently damaged. So this is a cuisse, it's a historic piece. Uh, this seems to me that it's also probably late 15th century uh, and German based on its fluting, uh, but I don't have any provenance on this and it could also be Italian. Uh, an interesting thing about this is you can see this whole section here. This is a period repair on this piece of armor. If we flip it inside out, you can see there's a patch that's riveted in to a hole in the armor and then it's fluted to match. Now this is very thin. It's also hard steel, hardened steel armor, uh, which meant it was very nice armor at the time. A lot of work went into it, but when it was damaged somehow, uh, probably during its period of use, someone went to a lot of trouble to patch it and repair it. Right? So as we've seen with our tests of weapons on armor, armor breaks when it's in use, right? When you hit weapons and armor together, they both take some damage and there's maintenance that needs to be done on these things consistently, right? So if your armor saves you from dying when you get hit, that's great. If it needs to be repaired afterwards, cool, right? If you're wearing a bulletproof vest and you get shot and you don't die, that's awesome. Right? Then you'll probably get a new bulletproof vest after that because it's become fatigued, it's hit these things. Medieval armor held up better and could be repaired more readily, but it had to be maintained and it had to be repaired. And as we saw in the last video, using the horseman's ax against plate armor, many of the weak points were the articulations between pieces of the armor. And these articulations could have mail behind them, mail under them, to give some reinforcement and to help protect you. Thanks very much.